Three, okay. two, one. All right, as they're warming up, this workout you are about to watch is from The Design, our online training program. It is the workout from Friday, September 17th. It's an interval format-based workout. So it's three sets. Each of the sets is for time. 30, they'll be both be doing 30, but for females, it's 24 cows. 30 cow ski, 30 kettlebell movements, which I'll get to in a second, and then 30 cow row with a three minute rest between sets. Now the kettlebell movement is different every set. So we have set one, it's 30 double kettlebell deadlifts. Set two is 30 one arm kettlebell snatches, alternating every five. And set three is 30 single kettlebell swings. So it's a little bit of variation in the external loading. It's relatively light load, high speed, and then I think the power on the cyclical machines will dictate the speed. We're about to watch Brandon and Kyle Habdo, two of our coaches, do the workout. I'll try to get some idea of their strategies and the paces they're trying to hold, and I'll try to give you some fun narration. Brandon's warmed up now. We're gonna get his paces for the two things. I'm guessing you're unbroken on the middle part. Yeah, so this is part of our deload week. So what I'm gonna do is try to demonstrate what I would do on this if I felt pretty good, but still wanted to hold back a little bit. So the first set is gonna be 1500 on both machines. Second set will be 1650-ish, and the third set will be about 1800. So I'll kick at the end, still getting like one little piece of intensity, and then unbroken on the kettlebell based on feel, basically. Yeah, yeah. But I think it'll be unbroken. All right, so that's a little bit more training orientation than comp competition. Let's see what Habdo's gonna do. I'm gonna tell him to try to beat Brandon. What are your paces? Uh, I think I'm gonna try to hold 1200 on the uh, Skierg, and then a little bit more on the rower, maybe like just sub 1500. Okay. I'm not good on the Skierg, I just spent like no time on it, so it's just gonna be kind of like uh, cool. maintain and try to like not blow up. Same each round. Same each round, yeah, I'm gonna try to just maintain. I wanna see if I can help hold like even splits. Cool, and, and then, unbroken here? Unbroken there, yeah. Cool, yeah, yeah All for right. sure. I'm not gonna try to convince him to beat Brandon. Brandon's paces are too fast. <laughs> Ten seconds. Three, two, one, go. You are sweaty, man. And they're off. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. All right. So Brandon, you guys can't see this right now. Brandon's at a little over 1,600, so going a little fast. Kyle Habdo's at a little over 1,300, so he's going out a little fast. I guess that's the camera boost that you get. You say you're gonna go at one pace to set the stage for low expectations, so that way you automatically get a victory when you keep going. Uh, but the difference in calories, I mean, when you can move fast on these machines. So Brandon's already at 14 cows right now. Habdo's at 11. So you can save a substantial amount of time on these relatively short workouts. And it's gonna play out over the course of this workout, you'll see. Brandon, just for context, Brandon is world class in terms of CrossFit based stuff that's like this, where it's cyclical, it's low weight, high movement, it doesn't challenge his knee. So these paces that he's holding in his like step system of going 1500, 1650, 1800, like those would be challenging for games level male athletes. Kyle Habdo is fit, but he, oh, Brandon just finished. So it took him a minute 13 to do that. Speed per rep here is gonna be pretty quick as he's doing this. You see, they're kind of more like RDLs here than they are deadlifts with a barbell. And speed is really all that you would focus on at that weight. It's pretty light. Even both of them together is only 106 pounds. All right, Habdo's off 130. So 17 seconds lost just on the skier. So it is a incredible separator to be good on these machines. Let's see if I can get these things set for them before they get on. All right, Brandon's done 146, getting on the rower. Let's see what his transition is like. One pull, two pulls, three pulls. All right, so three pulls, he's already over 1,300. Fourth pull was 1,600, and now he's in the mid 1600s. So again, he's a little bit ahead of pace. He's probably gonna throttle back. Yeah, so he's, well, he's still at 1622, 1599. Let's see, have the one, two, Third pull there is at 1,031. 
and then he's at 1400. So four poles, it's less than six seconds, it's still a pretty good transition, but that's really the major separation when it comes to these cyclical machines in a sprint, getting on, being able to accelerate quick, being able to keep your paces, that's really what dictates somebody that can be successful. Another thing to notice here, so Brandon's at, a hunt, at 28 strokes a minute here holding 1500, Kyle's at 33 strokes a minute holding 1300. So he's going less power per stroke and more, more strokes in a minute. I think this kind of slower cadence that's a little bit more powerful is a better strategy when it comes to rowing. That's generally what actual rowing coaches would teach, but you want some variation and ability to be able to play with both. Bam, done, 303 for Brandon in the first set. So he'll go, we'll just have him go at six minutes instead of three minutes. We'll see how far, Habdo's at 20 cows right now, so he's got nine cows left. He's just over 1,300. So he's a little bit faster than he said he was trying to hold. I think he said 1,200 ski and 1,200 row, but maybe he said 1,200 ski and 1,300 row. 26, 27, getting closer. So on this type of workout, because it's intervals, you're not necessarily always practicing that sprint finish where you're trying to, oh, there he is, 339. So we'll have him go at 340, or 640, you'll go. All right, so if you look at just uh, posture, respiration, all that stuff, Brandon looks pretty recovered. I think this was a easier effort for him. Habdo, Habdo looks pretty recovered now by this point. It's like, it's only 25 seconds past and he looks pretty good, breathing's back to normal. I think just effort-wise though, uh, even though the Kyle's pace was slower, I think the effort that he put out to get that pace was actually potentially harder than Brandon's. I think Brandon has more in the tank at this pace, and we'll see what it looks like as he goes through these next movements. If he starts picking up the pace, you'll start to see the difference in how much faster he gets these 30 calories done. So now we're gonna be off starting time. So Brandon's gonna go at the six minute mark and Kyle's gonna go at the 640 mark. So it's a little bit less than three minutes rest than one second more than three minutes rest. But oftentimes when we're doing intervals like this, it's much easier to use a round number to jump on and not have to reset the clock. And that way everybody can share the clock and just kind of be off pace when they're going. Different style of workout than if you're just doing a Metcon with somebody and there's a start and finish for everyone. All right, one minute till Brandon goes. And there's Travis, just looking like a pale warrior pressing overhead and not a good dancer. So hard to the pace. Should we do the Pasty Warrior song as he dances this? Travis Mayer, Travis Mayer. He's a friend to everyone. Oh, and here's Bryn. <laughs> T minus 20 seconds. <laughs> he gets I know. Yeah. He to slow down, he goes too low. Brandon's excited. Is that like way too fast? And he's off, ladies and gentlemen. Kyle Habdo, still resting. I'd probably still be resting after Kyle was done. All right, pace. So Brandon wanted 1650, now he's at 16. He's between 16 and 1700. 1660, he hit 1700 once. So at this pace, I think it's just harder to stay exactly on your number, but this is a flying pace. Strokes per minute here, 47, so this is a lot different than the rower. I think the speed with which you can get up and down dictates how well people can be on this. Three, two, one, go. Habdo's in. So I was talking about Brandon there and had to start Habdo. Brandon's at 20 cals in 46 seconds. If you remember from the first time he did this, it was 113 to finish. So let's just see what this increase in pace does to his overall finish time on this. It's at 25, 26. It's like one and a half strokes per pull there, I think. So 107, so five seconds faster over the course of 30 cows, which is huge in a sprint style workout. So as Brandon's doing this, 
Dead, kettlebell deadlift is obviously a little bit less powerful than a kettlebell snatch. You gotta switch every five. I think uh, general exposure to this is probably a little bit less than other movements. There's probably some little technical things he can do here and be a little bit smoother with the transition there <clears throat> that you could learn if you do uh, kettlebell sport practice and just getting better with the timing. But I think for Brandon here, he's just kind of cycling it. This isn't at like full speed, but there's really no break time there. So these are still gonna be pretty fast. He's gonna get onto the rower and probably hold a fast pace. And I think the only time that separation on the kettlebell would be a big deal would be like if this were just a one round for time competitive style workout. All right, back over to Habdo. He's at 27 cals right now. He's just over 1100. So a little bit off his 1200 target from the first round but his finish time here, 132 to finish those. So pretty close to the first output time of that. And now he's basically 30 snatches behind. But remember, as you're watching this, he didn't start this second interval at the same time. So he's not really losing this interval by that much. He's 40 seconds behind there, Cab Habdo. I think the camera caught that. Habdo kind of dropped the kettlebell. Best thing to do would be able to kind of practice that transitional sequence. When you snatch it, you can either bring it back down to the shoulder and figure out how to transition in between. The putting it back down on the ground is definitely not the most efficient way. There's a more efficient way to kind of almost juggle as you're going down into the other hand. And that way you save yourself the potential of dropping the kettlebell or having kind of a, a pause in the hinge sequence. All right, Brandon here. He is, he's well over 1650. So 1658, 1671, he was over 1700 for one pull. So his target for this round was over 1650. He's over that. He's still, so he picked up his stroke cadence here a little bit. He's at 31 strokes per minute when he's doing this. It's a little faster in terms of overall cadence. They're still really powerful pulls. He's at 28 cals at a minute seven and he finished there 110, 934. That means that interval was 334, but the paces of the rower and the skier were way faster. Here's Kyle transitioning, but the kettlebell snatch is just slower than the kettlebell deadlift. So take that into consideration when you're looking at these intervals. It's not that you're going faster and you're necessarily gonna get a faster time on it because the movements are different in each one of the workouts. All right, so here's Kyle now. Kyle's got to finish this interval. He's five cals in. He's just under that 1200 range. That was, I think that was his target for both of these. Um, and he's hitting that. It seems like he's a little bit e more easily hitting that here on the rower than he was on the skier. Um, and he maybe has a little bit more comfort and background with this movement. Strokes per minute's about the same as last time. And he's almost halfway through this rowing portion of the interval. It's definitely a uh, tough challenge as you get deeper into this workout. You're getting more tired, more fatigued. You think that three minute rest is like a nice break, but it also allows you to bring a little bit more intensity to each one of the intervals. So sometimes when you do a workout like this, you can actually hold a higher pace than if you were doing just a Metcon. So this workout in the design, the way that it's written is actually during a deload week. And for those that get into the program late that don't want the deload option, there's a harder option in terms of how to approach it. But the deload option is to kind of approach it more how Brandon did, where you're going pace or you're practicing going at one pace and then increasing as you go through. So a little bit different in terms of what type of session that we're showing you. Two more cows left here. Time. 11.26, and he started at 9.40. I'm gonna have to do that clock math later. Oh no, sorry, he started at 6.40. Carry the one. Yeah, okay. it's like four minutes and 46 seconds, I think. I'll have to check that later. I'm not good at clock math. So Brandon went 9.34, so you go 12.30. All right, so Brandon's gonna start his last interval. Remember he said his paces here were 1800 target. That is fast. You dead? What's up? You dead? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Sasha, first. <laughs> it's probably the same. Oh,
I mean, not that they would have really affected this that much, but man, please. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, go. Habdo, you're 14, 14, 30. All right, so he is staying true to form here. He's uh, just under 1,800 cows per hour here. My friends watching, that is very fast. That is very impressive. That's very hard to hold. The fact that he's gonna hold that and might most likely do this extra work unbroken and then move on and go fast on the rower, that is very, very good high power conditioning. It's something Brandon is very good at. He's over, he's just over 50 strokes a minute as he's doing that. It's just a fast cycle rate, hard pulls. He's fallen off his pace a little bit, so he's down in the mid 1600s now. So he held that 1800 target for about 45 seconds before he fell off. So I think that this overall time to complete this 30 cows will still be faster. He's at 25 now, 26. We're just at a minute, he's at 27, 28, 29. Finish, 105 to finish there. So about the same as the last time. Now we're doing the American kettlebell swings here. This type of kettlebell swing I feel like is uh, very specific to CrossFit, going all the way overhead. Russian kettlebell swings, they generally stop with the arms right in front of the shoulder and sometimes even bend the arms and get a little bit of a different action. It's a standard CrossFit held where you're bringing it all the way overhead. It's a little bit different. Brandon gets a little bit less knee bend, a little bit more hinge than maybe traditional um, kettlebell coaching would indicate. But I think when you're trying to do a Metcon, you're trying to find an efficient sequence and Brandon has great hip flexion and just strength and control and endurance in that hinge pattern. So he's gonna be finishing those up. Kyle Habdo is gonna be starting in five, four, three, two, one, last interval. All right, so let's see, uh, Brandon's finishing up those swings. Kyle's just getting started on his last one. Let's see what the paces look like on this. So he's right over 1,100. Basically, the target that he wanted was 1,200 that he said he wanted to hold steady across. He said he did some strength work this morning. Legs are feeling a little tired and he might have overestimated what he was possible to do there. But it is what it is. And sometimes you gotta figure out how to get your paces done under fatigue. Oh, there's Travis benching. That's, that might be his one rep max, I'm not sure. Or his 10 rep max, because he's already done more than that. All right, Brandon over here, he's over, he's over 1,900 cows per hour now. So he's well over his target here. He fell off his pace a little bit on the ski, but it looks like he's making it up here and going faster here. So I'll be curious to ask him afterwards if the ski erg was just tougher or what. Also, so as you notice here, he's now at the stroke per minute pace. He's at 34, 35. He's now at the stroke per minute pace that Kyle was at when Kyle was doing his workout before. Only difference now is he's at 1,900 cows per hour. So that is fast. And he's maintaining it through the course of the whole thing. He's at 25 cows, so he'll be finishing up the interval pretty soon. Three cows left, two cows, one cow time, 15.54. So that means that last interval was 3.24. So 303, 334, 324 for Brandon. He pushed hard. He's too prideful to fall to the ground and flop like a fish, but that's my MO if I finish a hard workout like this. All right, now Kyle. So Kyle fell off his pace here a little bit. He's at 900 cows per hour here. So definitely not the 1,200 target he wanted, but he's moving to the swings now. This transition is like... <laughs> Good, quick transition. So same thing about the swings. One thing you notice here as Kyle's doing it, same type of pattern as uh, Brandon, where it's not as much of a knee bend, not as much of a hinge. <laughs> Travis is yelling no rep in the past. This is actually one of those movements in CrossFit that has caused some controversy in competition, trying to figure out what is the barrier for an overhead rep. Is it that your ears are showing? Is it completely vertical? Does the kettlebell itself have to be vertical? We don't have an answer to it. This workout is just kind of an overhead swing, so we want it driven overhead, but we're not gonna be super stringent upon the standard because we've never seen one in competition that had some sort of a standard that was uh, 
realistic and easily enforceable. I'm standing from the side and you can kind of see his ear poke through every time. So you can see that ear. Sometimes that's been a standard. Now he's getting a little bit more vertical because he sees you from the side. So he's, he's aware that we're here watching. He also broke this up. It looks like he's gonna break it into two sets. He basically just has this and the row left and then the workout's done. All right, here we are now, the moment of truth. Come on, Kyle, let's work here. Two, three, four, so four pulls. He's at his target pace, under seven seconds. I like as a target, under five seconds if you can do that, so sometimes those earlier pulls need to be a little bit faster. He's gotta to get to 30 cals and then he's done for the workout. He started at 14.30, we're at 18.10 right now, so we are, approaching the four minute mark on this workout. Brandon finished this portion in 324. So give context to just the different paces, the different speeds, how you can approach the workout. I think from a classification standpoint on this workout, you're looking at Brandon being like our elite categorization and Kyle being like our RX categorization. So that can kind of give you some target paces to go after in the workout. Now he's uh, just under 1300, so he's picking up pace. He's at 19 cows right now, 20 cows. He's got 10 cows left. You guys get the beautiful sight of watching Travis do pause bench presses with lightweight. So one, maybe one of the one movements that I can still beat Travis in, so I'll rub it in his face whenever I can. And he can't hear me because he has headphones in. All right, he got four cows left. So now he's practicing a little bit of a sprint finish kick. He's at over 1,400. Strokes per minute are at 33. It's looking pretty good, pretty strong, done. Bam, 19.15 to finish, so 4.45 for that last one. A little slower, good execution, good workout. I think they got what they wanted out of it. Three times, all of them. No. This is three sets. One set is all of that. They're not doing nine of these, that's it. See you, folks. Too easy.